Good morning and welcome to Cornerbrook Baptist Church. This morning is a little bit different. I'm without my trusty cameraman today, David LaRose. David has done superb service in providing this, um, this video week after week after week. And it is summertime. It's time to give David a little bit of a rest. And so I'll be doing this in sort of a selfie manner for the next little while. But I do want to, to express my deep appreciation for the kind of consistent effort that David has put into producing this online sermon for such a, a long period of time. Well, practically since the, since the COVID-19 pandemic began. But today I want to talk to you about the uh, about the last stop in Jericho. It's a great it's a great theme from a great story. But I want to start today with a line from a book that comes out of my li my library. It's in it's entitled The Last Words of Saints and Sinners. It's a sometimes humorous book uh, that records the final sentences that people recorded before their death. Do you remember the famous exchange between a lady and Sir Winston, uh, Winston Churchill? These two persons were political ad ad adversaries. And she said to him, rather acerbically, if you were my husband, I would put poison in your tea. And Sir Winston, who was never at a loss for words, replied to her, if you were my wife, I would drink it. For all of us, and uh, this is being driven home during the pandemic, life has a start and it has an end. Regardless of how the start was or the failures that we have experienced, it's important that we finish well. It's important that we reach certain goals. I think it's important as well for us to grasp God's timing for our lives. We don't get to live our days over. So it becomes essential that we, that we recognize that time is always in limited supply for everybody. And nowhere is that more true than the person who's, the, uh, who's one of the main characters in our scripture reading today. Luke chapter 18 is where I want to read from. As Jesus approached Jericho, verse 35, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they praised God. Now this was the beginning of a, a busy day in Jericho. The verses immediately preceding this account are laden with the talk that we associate with Easter. It's one of the passion sayings, Luke chapter 18, just before where we read today, reads like this, Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, we're going up to Jerusalem and everything that has been written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. To make the story more personal, we have to go to Mark's Gospel, where he identifies the man as Bartimaeus, which really means the son of Timaeus. This man eked out a poor living by accosting every person who came within the sound of his voice. As Jesus approached, the blind beggar heard the commotion. He knew that something exciting was happening and maybe saw it as an opportunity for a meal. Surely in that throng were people who would take pity on a blind man. But before he launched his cry for coins, 
His ears told him the reason for the commotion. Perhaps as someone brushed by him, he asked, what's going on? And someone gave him the very best news that anyone can receive. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now I stopped in mid-thought to contemplate how this reply has inspired so many people. It changed a wedding feast in Cana when Jesus came to have supper. It changed a widow's life and her son's life as Jesus practically broke up a funeral in a town called Nain. It changed the disciples' perspective as he walked to them on the water. Later that same day, it would change the life of a crooked little man that we know of as Zac Zacchaeus, who also was from Jericho and is a part of this same, same story. Now, hymn writers have been inspired by this story. Oswald J. Smith wrote the, the old number that you probably will remember, some of you at least. One sat alone beside the highway begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus came and bid the darkness flee. And perhaps it's from this story as well that John Newton found his great line. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. See, Bartimaeus needs to be heard today for his excellent response. No one needed to tell this man that he was blind. No one knew his pain nor his shame at being forced to beg for his living. He had his limitations, but he was neither lame, mute, nor deaf. His voice shouted above the mob, and you need to hear his voice. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I love his insistence of wanting to be heard. The crowd had tried to make him be quiet. And surely Jesus would have had no time for this beggar. But the more they held him back, the more determined he became. He cried louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is a man that, being a beggar, he may not have smelled the best nor been welcomed among the religious establishment of Jericho. But he knew he had a need. And he knew that within the sound of his voice, there was someone who could meet that need. And Bartimaeus had no intention of being denied. See, in Bartimaeus, we find the raw essence of faith. He's a soul crying out for deliverance from private darkness. And if you could permit me one indulgence today, I would like to think that this man had probably been to the synagogue a few times in his life. He may have been taught among a group of boys by one of the rabbis. He shows some intelligence here. The person who identified the cause of the commotion, we read it, said Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. But when Bartimaeus begins to cry, cry out, he uses a different title. He may have grown up in Nazareth, Jesus did, but somehow this blind man knows he's born in Bethlehem. He doesn't share the opinion that Jesus is the son of the carpenter Joseph, but he calls upon him as the son of David. He sees him as the Bethlehem-born healer. Now, I'd like to think that this man also knew a little about the messianic hopes of Israel. He might have even heard a rabbi in anticipation of Christ quote Isaiah 6, 61 and 1 has special meaning for him. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the suffering and afflicted. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to announce liberty to captives, and then this phrase, and to open the eyes of the blind. He had been held captive to blindness, and now the source of his hope was just a few yards away from him. Who wouldn't yell until their lungs ached? if the answer to their deepest need was within hearing distance. Unable to see, Bartimaeus screamed out to Jesus. You see, there are people today who really don't understand their need. They would never lift their voice in prayer or in praise. But when the writer to the he, he Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7 describes the priestly ministry of Jesus, he writes this, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears 
to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. There are times when we have to lift our voices and cry out to God. Bartimaeus had the good sense to know that he had reached this critical moment. Now search the Gospels for something, if you will, because this is another fact. This was to be Jesus' last stop ever in Jericho. It would have been Bartimaeus' last opportunity to meet him. And here's a message for us. When we cry out, God hears us. Jesus heard, he stopped. He called for the blind man and someone brought him closer. Jesus' question is simple. What do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus had no trouble answering the question and defining his need. Lord, that I would receive my sight. I wish people had that kind of faith today. They wander in blindness, never knowing the giver of sight. And the answer for us is Christ, just as it was for Bartimaeus. He followed Jesus down the road, Luke says, because now he could see the road he was on. And he rejoiced because Christ had totally changed his life. And perhaps there, there are those who are listening today need to hear these kinds of words. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Has it occurred to you that the first time Jericho gets any notice in the scriptures, it's the object of the attention of spies. Joshua and Caleb stayed in the city and scouted it for its weak points. They barely escaped and only did so with the help of Rahab who hid them. Jericho was the target of Israel's conquest of the promised land at the end of the Exodus. It was a city that was slated for demolition an obstacle in Israel's pathway, and the object lesson to other cities in the land that God's people were on the move. Has it occurred to you that the words Jesus and Joshua are virtually identical words? One Greek and one a Hebrew word. Joshua comes to the promised land with military conquest in mind. His weapon is the sword. Israel comes back to the promised land to regain our home, homeland. But Jesus arrives to release the oppressed, and his symbol is the cross. He's raiding the broken world of Israel's hopelessness and giving a spiritual heritage to sons and daughters. Joshua came to use his sight and act as a spy. Jesus comes to Restore sight and allow us to see the mercy and the glory of God. The richness of this miracle is not wasted on my mind. Bartimaeus's eyes were opened to the face of Jesus. His first glimpse was into the face of God. Now I'll end where I began. Concepts that we often use have the word last attached. Railroaders talk about a last spike. Athletes have a last game or last shift. Mill workers, same. Last shift. Soldiers make a last stand. Engineers, a last run. Carpenters drive a last nail. Pastors preach a last sermon. Everyone as a last will and testament, or at least we should. Everything runs out, but life in Jesus Christ is forever. Don't miss your opportunity. Bartimaeus took advantage of his to meet Jesus Christ as his Savior and as his friend. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the great opportunity we have to know you. When we look upon you through the pages of scripture and we see you through the eye of faith, we are seeing the face of God. I pray that you would restore our sight 
if we have lost sight of what's important. I pray that in these days when we are more reflective and while life hangs more in the balance, I pray that we will see you more clearly. May our eyes be open to the truth of your word and the power of your person. I pray that someone today will know this as a reality for themselves. We give you thanks and praise and bless you in Christ's name. Amen.